I'm gonna be out for most of the day, by the way, guys, so I don't do this just for breakfast. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new, then welcome to my channel, which is all about educational beauty, honest and transparent beauty advice. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you the correct order of makeup application. And I'm also gonna go through exactly how you would change it if you're doing a different kind of look. So all will be explained, so keep watching. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. And don't forget, you can catch me over on Instagram too. Now let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is put my moisturizer on. I'm using my Forever Living Products Aloe Moisturizing Lotion. This is something that I have been using on and off for years because, well, ever since I was like, a teenager I think because one of my cousin introduced me to it because that's what they do for our living products everyone fell in love with the product so it's really really good it's just so soothing for the skin but I've been using it on and off because when I'm going in between different brands of moisturizers then I use this so you know when I'm like not trying something different out then I will always stick to this this is my like general moisturizer and it's amazing it's just never irritated my skin for eye cream I'm going to use my Ula Henriksen wrinkle blur eye cream and I'm just like patting this around my eyes now I like my application to be very uniform so it's just very logical for example like I see some people who put the whole face on and then they do the eyes after and I feel like but then you're not really getting that really nice seamless transition into the rest of the face so I always put my concealer on my eyes first and then I carry on with kind of anything else that I need to do it does depend on whether you're doing a heavy eye makeup or not I'm not doing a heavy eye makeup because this is my like everyday makeup look generally like sometimes I will change around the eyeshadow or sometimes I don't even wear any eyeshadow so today I'm going to probably put a tiny bit of eyeshadow just to add some color so I'm just applying my concealer on my lids and it is my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in medium. I'm gonna just buff this in. This gives me a really nice even finish and it's ready for whatever eyeshadow, if any, that I apply. Now I'm going into my Ben Eye Banana Powder and my Laura Mercier Powder Puff and I'm just pressing it in. So I basically put a small amount in the palm of my hand and then I kind of like, on like that and then I dab over my eyelids. Just to get rid of any excess, I get my Real Techniques brush and I just brush over lightly. There's nothing on the brush, it's just taking away any excess powder. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna do the rest of the face because now when I apply my foundation and any concealer, it's kind of like, it doesn't, it won't feel like this is completely empty and then I go over afterwards with concealer and then it's gonna look a bit kind of whitish, you know? So now everything is gonna like blend into one so it doesn't look like anything's disconnected. But before I apply my foundation concealer, I am gonna apply some primer, which is also my SPF. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Invisible Flawless Poreless Primer, and it's SPF 50, which is great. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply my concealer, which is, again, the Tarte Shape Tape. I'm gonna just apply this under, on my under eyes. Like, it's the weekend, so this is usually the kind of makeup I would do, just generally going out. Where are we going? I'm just gonna go get, get some breakfast at the mall. It's just like an everyday look for me. Now I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass Vanish Concealer, and I'm just gonna apply a small amount on other areas, just where I want it to kind of like highlight. I'm gonna grab my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Complexion Brush and just start buffing in the areas that I've applied the Hourglass Concealer. Now, if you're wondering why I am applying concealer before my foundation, then you really need to check out some other videos of mine. If you go under the foundation playlist, then an all contouring playlist, you'll find videos that tell you why, like whether you should apply your concealer before or after your foundation. Now I'm gonna go in with my beauty blender and I'm just gonna buff my under eyes. So again, I'm tapping, dabbing, whatever you wanna call it, but it is basically pressing very close together. Movements are a small but quick now i'm going to actually apply a darker concealer which is going to really kind of sculpt my face i'm using my mark jacobs accomplice concealer in tan 46 and i'm just going to apply this to the areas that i really want to kind of sculpt 
And then what I do is I get my Hollywood complexion brush again and I just buff this in. I keep the shapes the same because otherwise there would be no point. And if any of you are thinking, well, aren't you just gonna cover this up with your foundation? Well, yes, but it is still gonna show through. Not as obvious though. And that's the great thing about underpainting is that it doesn't look so obvious. It looks very soft focus. It looks very subtle. If you were to apply the same foundation that I'm gonna use on its own with none of this underneath, trust me, the finish would be completely different. So it doesn't actually cover it all up, you know, where it just disappears. It doesn't just disappear. You see that slight warmth coming through on, along the perimeter of the face. And yeah, it does make a difference. Otherwise I would not waste my time doing this, trust me. I think I might apply a cream blush today. I think most of the time I'm applying powder, but I'm feeling cream at the moment. So I'm actually gonna use this one. I'm using the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in Bliss. I've realized that you need quite a lot of this to show on my skin color. I'm just gonna use a different sponge that I've got here, which I don't wanna use like my, the sponge I'm currently using for my foundation because it's just gonna have blush all over it. So do you see what I mean? It kind of like really blends in where you have to use a lot of it. Okay, I'm gonna use my foundation now. I'm actually gonna use the Dior Forever foundation because I started using it last week and it's amazing. So this is actually a matte foundation. And it just lasts really, really well throughout the day and it stays mad. I did a wear test on this recently, so you might wanna go check that out, which is like full vlog style in terms of like showing you what my skin went through throughout the day. I put the foundation on the back of my hand and I'm buffing it in with my Beauty Blender now. I don't actually use a lot of foundation. With underpainting, you don't need to use a lot of foundation. You just need to use a small amount. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is get my powder, which is the Benai Banana Powder. And sometimes I mix in the color buff into this, but I'm quite tanned at the moment because I, was, I had a few pool days last week. So I need to go, I need, uh, the banana's fine with me completely. I'm gonna get my powder puff. I kind of like squeeze it together so I can really get into the under eye area. And first off, get rid of the creases. So I put the powder in the palm of my hand and basically I go like that and then I go like that. Now with whatever's left, I just kind of go on to other areas. Okay, I'm gonna get the big part of my hourglass veil brush and just dust off everything other than my under eyes because the brush is way too big for that area. Then I get my Real Techniques brush, the setting brush, and I dust the under eyes off. So as you can see, everything is kind of like nicely blended together. Like the, even the eyelids don't look completely separate now. Whereas if I had done all of that and I left the eyelids and did that next, then you'd see it would be really obvious. That's why I do it in that order. The next step is, is working from the forehead down. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the eyebrows first cause that's like frames the face. I'm gonna get my Anastasia Brow Wiz in chocolate and I'm just gonna start kind of filling my brows in and shaping them. I like to kind of like do the line underneath because it shapes them. It gives me something to work from. So I do the underside of the brow first and that gives me my shape. So I know I'm not really going any lower than that. And then I start kind of like drawing the feather strokes. Now that the brows are done, I'm gonna move on to the eyes and I'm gonna apply the shade Rob from the Hindash Monochromance, if that's how you say it, palette. So like a really nice like deep pinkish color. So I'm just gonna apply that to my lash line. I just wanna make clear that if you are using eyeshadow or you're doing like a heavy eye look, then I would do my concealer on my eyes, set it, and then I would do the full eye look. And then I would carry on with the base because if it's quite a heavy eye look, you're gonna drop eyeshadow. And if I'm using, like I always make sure I use eyeshadows which don't have much fallout if I've already done my base. And this is quite a light look, this isn't anything crazy. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a soft wing at the end. And this is actually my 219 brush from MAC. I just want like a really easy look, but something which has a little bit of color. I'm just gonna like, Buff this into that whole lash line. Just whatever's left on the brush. Just kind of like drag it across. 
Okay, so next what I usually do is just apply the tiniest amount of liquid liner, but only on the inner corner there because I want to apply some lashes and I like to have a gap there. So because there's a gap there, I don't want to see a gap, you know, because by leaving a gap there between my real lashes and my false lashes, it means that the false lashes are not going to irritate me and really they shouldn't be that close to there anyway. So I'm just going to get my Huda Beauty Life Liner pen and I'm going super, super close to my lash line here. There you go. By looking down into the mirror, you actually get a much closer finish. And it's much easier. That's literally it. Just that in a, like the first quarter of the upper lash line, it's super close to the lash line. Okay, I'm just gonna go in with my Fenty Full Frontal Mascara. Just gonna add a little bit because obviously I'm putting lashes on, so I'm not too fast about my mascara. And like, I'm gonna be out for most of the day, by the way, guys, so I don't do this just for breakfast. So I'm doing my face because you know, I'm putting lashes on because I'm gonna be out most of the day. Okay, just gonna apply a little bit of glue onto my lashes, just onto the strip. While the glue is drying, or like, you know, semi-drying, I just usually apply some of my Dior Lip Maximizer, just so that it keeps my lips hydrated. It gives me that extra boost of hydration under whatever lipstick I decide to put on. Okay, just gonna go ahead and apply this. Okay, so while my upper lashes are drying, I'm just gonna put some mascara on my lower lashes. Now, I don't touch the upper lashes until I know the, the glue has properly dried. And then I'm gonna go up and just to do a few adjustments and I'll explain what. And these are things that I feel that do actually happen to people when applying lashes. Okay, so I'm gonna get my Fenty Sunstalker Bronzer in Caramel Cutie. This is quite a warm shade, but then I'm quite bronzed at the moment. Like, I feel like I'm more tan than usual. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. I'm using my Hourglass Veil Powder Brush. I'm just going from the middle of the ear inwards. I just feel like this gives me a little bit of that extra sculpting, but you don't have to because you've obviously already got some really soft sculpting with the contour, but if I didn't apply the contour, I'd be going a lot heavier with this bronzer to like sculpt my face, but I feel like this way it doesn't look so powdery because I'm not having to apply as much. Okay, just gonna get my Sunstalker bronzer in Shady Biz and my 200 Fenty brush. I just like to kind of shape the end of my nose a bit more. Okay, now something that I notice happens a lot when you put lashes on, or not a lot, but sometimes it can happen, is if you don't want to wear any eyeliner with your lashes, like obviously I only applied it here because that's the area that there are no lash, like no false lash, but across here, I don't want to wear eyeliner because I just don't want to wear eyeliner with lashes all the time, you know, I much prefer this type of look. What happens is sometimes when you apply your glue and then you press it in, the glue can spread a little bit and then you feel like you've got kind of this jagged line and sometimes you may feel like you have to go in with eyeliner then to cover it. So I just want to show you what I do because I don't want to have to resort to wearing eyeliner because it's a heavier look than what I actually want. I get a very small brush and this one is the Sigma L04 brush. It's just very small. What I do is any kind of, any glue that I see that's kind of like bundled up or like making a kind of shape that I don't want, I just push it down. But here I can see a little bit. So I just push that down into the lashes very softly. And then basically it's got rid of any kind of jagged line or, or glue that's kind of spread into areas that I don't want. There you go. And that's it. So you don't have to wear eyeliner with it. I don't really feel like I need to add more blush because I can see the blush coming through. But if you wanted to add more blush, you can go ahead and add a powder blush on top as well because it just gives it that extra punch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a highlight. I'm actually using the Armani Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder. This is five. 5. And I like this because it's not so much like a really sparkly highlighter. Some, I don't really like highlighters that look super sparkly. So I always try and go for something that is ultra, ultra fine milled. But this one is amazing because it actually just gives you that glow without it looking like there's any sparkle there. So I'm going to get this and I'm using my Zoeva 134 brush. And I'm just going to apply this here. See what I mean? Hopefully you can see that come through. It's just... I love it, that's it. It just gives you a, a really soft, it just looks so much more natural. Okay, I'm gonna get a smaller brush. I don't even know what this brush is, guys, so sorry, but anything which is like a pencil dome brush. And I'm just gonna apply some of this to the tip of my nose and just down the bridge of my nose. Lastly, I'm gonna get my lip pencil, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. And you can see how that lip maximizer is kind of like really sunken into the skin now. So I don't need to actually blot it at all, but it's left this really nice hydrating tackiness there, which means that my lips are not gonna feel dry underneath. 
Just gonna go in with my Bobbi Brown Luxe Liquid Lip High Shine in Barely Nude 2. Unfortunately, this is one of those lip products that it just goes everywhere around the, you know, that bit. So I don't even take the lid out anymore. I just like grab a little bit with the lip brush because I don't actually want to waste all that product. And I just put the tiniest bit. Let's put a little bit of a brighter color. I'm using the Anastasia lipstick in Hollywood. I love this color. Just in the center and then I spread it out. So there you go, that is the correct order of makeup. That's how I feel that it's a lot more logical. Everything kind of like melts in really nicely together and it doesn't look like anything's really disconnected. Now again, remember that if you are going for a much heavier eye look, you're using blacks, like black eyeshadow, like dark brows and there's a lot of fallout from the eyeshadow, then I would suggest doing, prepping your eye with your concealer, setting it with powder and then going in and doing your upper lid eye look and then carrying on with your the rest of your face in terms of your foundation and everything else we've done and then you can go ahead and do the under eye if you're adding any eyeshadow there so when i say that you want to do your eyes first it doesn't mean you do the whole eye it means you do everything on the lid because if you were to do the under eye too and you haven't even applied your concealer and foundation it's just going to completely mess that up so always leave the from this section here down completely empty if you're doing a heavy eye look first and then once you're done you can do your base and everything else and then finish off the under eye area so I do hope that that has kind of cleared it up for you and you've seen for yourself why I do it in this order and again like I said this is just like an like a kind of my basic go-to look if I'm going out anywhere which I'm not too fussed about how glam I look but I still want to look presentable and I still want a nice clean look I hope you've enjoyed this video and it kind of explains everything to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments box below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.